Council Committee on Ordinance and Legislation will now come to order. Madam Clerk. Council Kadeem. Council Dion. Here. Council Lee. Here. <coughs> Council Ferreira. Here. Here. Chair and Liberty Lebeau. Here. <coughs> Pursuant to the open meeting law, any person may make an audio or video recording of this public meeting or may transmit the meeting through any medium. Attendees are therefore advised that such recordings or transmissions are being made, whether perceived or unperceived by those present, and are deemed acknowledged and permissible. <clears throat> item one is citizens' input. Madam Clerk, I just have this one item. Is that correct? Correct. That's all we have. Good afternoon, Madam Chairwoman and members of the Ordinance Committee. On your agenda today is the topic of water and sewer rates regarding the City of Fall River. Due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, many families are out of work and are dealing with other expenses and needs. They have to face many challenges, bills, and ongoing stresses from this catastrophe. Water rates are one of those bills many Fall River residents have to deal with. An individual's water bill is only bound to go up due to the CDC recommendations of frequent hand washing and cleaning. At this point, it would only be fair and reasonable for this subcommittee to vote to reduce or suspend water rates for the time being to give our city residents a fair break while we all get through this pandemic together. I wish everyone good health and a great day. Respectfully, submitted Colin Dias. We have changed the um, agenda that's actually not on our agenda tonight. It is going to be on the Finance Committee at our next meeting. And we need a motion to withdraw on that, Pam? If we have, citizen, that was just citizens' input. Okay, but I mean for the um, water and sewer. It's not on here. They amended the agenda. Okay, so we're totally off. Thank you. Okay. Item two, the minutes from the January 28th, 2020 meeting. Motion to adopt the uh, approved Second. minutes. Motion made by Council Pereira, seconded by Councilor Lee. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Do you need roll call on everything? I can't hear you. I can't hear her. I still can't hear you. Can she you hear me now? Yep. Yeah. We will need roll call on all motions. Okay. Council Kadeem. Council Dion. Yes. Council Lee. Yes. Councilor Pereira? Yes. Chair Liberty LeBeau? Yes. Item three is proposed ordinance, traffic, handicap parking that was referred on January 28th, 2020, February 11th, 2020, and March 10th, 2020. I have a question. Prayer. Yeah, just um, a question for Laura. When we're doing these handicap, um, you know, we're passing these handicap, do you have personnel that are going out and putting up these signs during this COVID or not? Just people have asked me. Yes, I do have. They don't come in every day. They do. They come in on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Um, they've been putting up stop signs that got knocked down. We had a meter knocked down. We had some street signs that were knocked down. When they come in, they kind of go around, check anything that's loose, missing. Um, so they have been working. Okay. Motion to adopt. Motion, Motion to adopt by Council Pereira, seconded by Council Dion. Madam Clerk. <coughs> Madam Clerk. Can you hear me again? Can you hear me? Can you hear me now, Colleen? Nope, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I have no sound. There you go. How you doing? Oh, yes. Yeah. Now you do. Roll call, Colleen. I can't hear you. How about now? Yep. Yeah. You can hear me now? Yep. 
I have no sound. You do now. I don't think she can hear us. No. At the last meeting, um, the clerk had similar difficulties too. Hmm. And all of a sudden, I had no sound at all. And I was using the unmute because can I can't you know? hear me. But then I can't hear anyone. It was working fine. She might have to dial in. Check the volume of the speaker at the bottom of the laptop. The dial into you. Uh, dial into you. Oh, you. They could hear me. I could hear them. It was oh, now you can. Yeah. Put your mind to that same assistant. Hello. <coughs> Hello. Hi. <laughs> Yeah, I have. I can't hear them, and they can't hear me. We can, hear, we can hear you. Who are you? Let's <laughs> see if we can jump back and forth. Which one? You see the? Yeah, it's off. That's off. That's on. Can you hear us now, Colleen? Now I can hear you. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Technical difficulties. All right. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I heard Laura speaking about putting up the signs on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Need a roll call. Right. Five three was motion yes. made by Council Pereira, seconded by Council Dion. Oh no! <laughs> now we can't hear you. Oh wow! This is crazy. Yeah. Oh, now we can hear you. Oh. Okay, I'm back again. All right, having trouble <laughs> with the laptop over here. Okay, so the motion was made by Councilor Pereira. Who was it seconded by? Councilor Dion. Okay, and we do need a roll call for everyone. Yes. Every motion. Yep. yep. <clears throat> okay. So now we're ready for the a motion for the emergency preamble. Correct. Yeah. I, Jim, yes. Yep. Councilor Pereira, you made that motion with emergency. We preamble. made a motion to it blocked, but now you want. You want it's the handicap parking, so usually we have an emergency for us yep. and then a motion for readings. Okay. Okay, so for the motion for the emergency preamble for the handicap parking, Councilor Kadeem? Councilor Dion? Yes. Councilor Lee? Yes. Councilor Pereira? Yes. Shayla Liberty Lebeau? Yes. Okay, now you'll need a motion for all readings. I'll make the motion for all readings. Second. second. Motion made by Councillor Dion, seconded by Councillor Lee. Okay, on the motion, Councillor Kadeem. Councillor Dion? Yes. Councillor Lee? Yes. Councillor Pereira? Yes. Chair of Liberty Lebeau? Yes. Okay, next item. For the proposed ordinance for traffic, which was referred January 28th, 2020, February 11th, 2020, and March 10th, 2020. And this is to do we want to do these all together? Section one by inserting in section 70-374, which section relates to 30 minute parking on Pleasant Street on the north side starting at a point 20 feet east of Quickershan Street for a distance of 20 feet easterly. Hours and days are seven to six, Monday through Saturday. I'll make a motion to them all, take them all together. Second. Does anyone have questions on any of them before we do that? No. Motion made to take them all together by Councilor Dion, seconded by Councilor Lee. I can't hear you. Colleen can't hear you. How about now? Yep. Okay. <clears throat> to take 
item number four in its entirety. A motion was made by Councilor Dion and seconded by Councilor Lee on the motion. Councilor Kadeem? Yes. Councilor Dion? Yes. Councilor Kadeem has joined the meeting? Yes. Yes? Okay. Councilor Dion? Yes. Councilor Lee? Yes. Councilor Ferreira? Yes. Chair for Liberty Lebeau? Yes. Okay, now you may want to pass it to first up. reading. Motion to adopt. Pass your first reading, Councilor Pereira. Yes. Second. Second, Dion. Ms. Farrar, there's not any um, time on this, is there? Is there any rush on any of these? Uh, no, just on the handicap uh, ones, I've had a few phone calls and I just explained them to the but all the other ones, it's not worth shattering that they go up. Thank you. Madam Clerk. Okay, sorry, we're just switching laptops here to hopefully. Okay, so we had a motion made by Councilor Pereira. Who was the second? Councilor Dion. Councilor Dion. Okay, to pass the ordinance through first reading, Councilor Skadeen? Councilor Dion? Yes. Council Lee? Yes. <clears throat> Council Pereira? Yes. Yeah. Jail Liberty Lebeau? Yes. yes. Item five is a resolution designation of veteran service officer as contact and consultant for veterans facilities, graves, monuments, and memorials. She was referred on February 25th. And I'll just read it because this was amended. Oops, I can find it. Submitted by Councilor Pereira. Whereas the veteran service officer has many duties and responsibilities regarding veterans' needs, and whereas the veteran service officer is designated with the authority and responsibility to establish and maintain all veterans' facilities, memorials, and designated veteran sites within the city of Fall River, now therefore be it resolved that the veteran service officer be designated as the contact consultant with the Department of Community Maintenance. Cemetery Department and Parks and Recreation Department and all duly authorized veterans service and nonprofit organizations within the city of Fall River to ensure that all Fall River veterans facilities, graves, monuments, and memorials are formed and provided in compliance with the code of the city of Fall River, state laws, and in the best interest of the residents of Fall River and protocols pertaining to veterans. And <coughs> Council Dion, I'm sorry, sponsor of the resolution, Council Pereira. Um, the only reason that I filed this resolution is because the Veterans Department sometimes gets additional money and they end up turning money back sometimes, pretty consistently they've turned money back. And with all of the veterans monuments we have, they have the ability to clean them and make sure that they're taken care of. However, those that are in the park, I guess, become the jurisdiction of the Park Department and they don't have the finances to keep up with them. But I would um, yield over to um, Ray Haig um, because most veterans agents do in their communities have control of all veterans monuments. So my other colleagues I see have raised their hands and have questions, so I would yield. But that was the main concern of putting this forward because I think the veterans agent should be the one that's responsible for all of the monuments. With that, I yield. Thank you. Ray? Can you hear me, Ray? Oh, yes, Councilor. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. She, Councilor Pereira wanted to turn it over to you. Oh, okay. I, I didn't know if you could hear me. This is kind of a new concept for me. Um, uh, good afternoon, Councilors, uh, Madam Chairperson. Um, Hello. This resolution, uh, I did read it, uh, submitted by Council Prayer. I don't really have a problem taking on any uh, other responsibilities within that department. It's something we can handle. Um, it seems to make sense. So um, if it's the council's will to install that as an ordinance, uh, my office would be able to comply. Council Dion? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> yeah, my concern is, um, 
Mass General Law gives the Park and Cemetery Board the authority over, obviously, parks and cemeteries. And I'm not sure that we have the power to um, give the, the veterans officer the, I don't know if you want to call it the right to just to randomly go in and take care of these things. I believe anything that has to be done inside of a park or cemetery would have to get prior approval from the park board. Um, so I don't know if that's a conversation we would need to have with uh, a member of the park board or the uh, director of parks and cemeteries. Mm -hmm. um, in, in, in researching it, uh, because I know it was gonna come before the council, the um, state laws speak to the powers and duties of the veterans agent, which includes um, uh, graves and um, monuments. Um, other cities and towns have uh, ordinances similar to this, which they enhance the duties of the VSOs. And um, I, I believe it's the power of the council to uh, write ordinances such as this, but um, that's a good question for the legal department. Yeah, I think that's something that we uh, need to um, pursue and, and and get the answer to because I certainly wouldn't want to do something that would uh, violate Mass General Law. And I'm sure uh, everybody would be happy. I'm sure that they would that the board in the in the parks would be happy to have help and to have somebody overseeing these things. Um, you know, a team effort is always good. I'm just not comfortable without that answer. And with that, I yield. Well, uh, just so the councilors will know, uh, we do fund the uh, cleaning and restoration of of monuments, and it's an ongoing uh, basis now. It's something that we we do do. You yield, Councilor? Yes, I yield. Lee, I, I think we have um, Nancy on as well. I think she's muted, but I um, she wasn't sure if she was going to be able to join us. So I, I feel that this situation, um, I agree that there's, there has to be con concern about Chapter 45 of Mass General Law regarding this because um, it, com it comes down to jurisdiction as to, you know, where the authority lies. And I think we have the opportunity with this ordinance because this is a good resolution and ordinance. I think that Council Pereira is coming from a good place on this. And I think what we can do after we have a conversation with, um, with our, you know, with our uh, attorney, that we we make this into something that we include, you know, some type of some type of uh, conversation with the park board in, in in this resolution because right now it's saying as de designated as the contact and consultant with the Department of Community Department, Park and Recreational Department. So what you could do is is just recognize that the, the park board is also a part of this uh, conversation here, uh, part of wherever uh, the VSO would consult um, regarding specifically these things. The other thing I want to point out is that, is anyone hear that beeping sound yes. or that, that, that static? static. <clears throat> the other thing that I'd like to point out um, is that maybe we need to specify that uh, there would be public city uh, graves because I believe that, and I'm not sure if you're, if, if, if it's, if it's accurate, but maybe Ray can clear it up for me, but, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Uh, Hay can clear it up for me that, um, this is only going to be for public, uh, graves and cemeteries, not, not private ones, correct? Well, yeah, we would have no jurisdiction over private cemeteries. Okay. Just, and I think, I think it's important for, you know, for, uh, the re the, a regular a person who's reading this from that that's not familiar with that would would want to know that um, so that way if they think that there's something going on at a private um, uh, cemetery that it would be something that you take care of so it's not always the case so I I think that if we just include somehow some way and I, I think it could be deliberated more that we include the park board in this in this resolution or in this uh, in this ordinance change that we would we would be covering some ground and at least that and take that step so that way we're not putting ourselves in any kind of conflict with uh, chapter 45 or any conflict with um, the VSO uh, part of, of mass general law as well and with that I yield Ms. Smith yes 
Did you want to weigh in? Um, I, I just, like you know, got um, informed of this today. Um, through Mass General Law, it is my understanding that the board has the jurisdiction when it is on a median strip or in a park or a cemetery. My other question is, as far as the manpower, I mean, the, the money can still come from Mr. Haig's budget, but the manpower, I'm assuming, is going to still come from parks and cemeteries. And we have worked in conjunction with the Veterans Organization um, you know, and Mr. Haig's department to you know, prepare these monuments for, for um, Memorial Day and Veterans Day. And we've taken that pretty much from our own budget. So I'm assuming that's where Councilor Pereira is saying this money could be utilized from Mr. Haig's budget to maintain. Now, I do know that in some instances, and I don't know how the Mr. Haig's budget is, um, or that money comes from the veterans, but maintenance in some shapes, like with community development, for example, we get money from them, but they need to do things new. They can't repair fences. We need to put new things. So I don't know what stipulations the money that Mr. Haig receives has, but I think we would get a lot more bang for our buck if the if the work was done in house, because other than that, are we going to contract out for these particular services to be done to these monuments in parks? I'm not. Uh, you know, I'm not familiar on how this was going to move forward. Well, I can answer the part of the um, restorations and the cleaning of the monuments are now done by private contractors. Uh, Iwo Jima is uh, cleaned, I believe, every two to three years. And the new monuments that have gone in that need a different type of uh, cleaning uh, the Gold Star Family Monument and the other Gold Star, uh, the other Gulf War Monument. Uh, not to mention the, um, the Vietnam Veterans Wall, which is going to be 380 feet long, uh, with all the uh, panels on it. Are going to need specialized uh, uh, cleaning going forward. Um, as the amount of money and the direction of the money in my budget, uh, most of it is uh, to be used in Chapter 115, which is a um, payback uh, on a 75-25 uh, with the state. Uh, my budget at this point doesn't have a lot of money uh, to go towards services like that. That would have to be put in on a line item. Um, the money that I turn back is usually money uh, that I did not use for the Chapter 115, which is designated for direct uh, benefits to veterans. You. Yeah. Councilor Dion? Yes, so my question to Mr. Haig would be, so essentially the monies that we're speaking of wouldn't be available for the purpose of this resolution? Is that what you're saying? Not the money that's in my budget at this particular time, unless so designated uh, by the council during budget time. Uh, you've put mm -hmm. other line items in the budget, such as money for the um, repair and uh, maintenance of Pine Street as a line item with a certain a figure in there that we use, very successful. Uh, if this ordinance passed and you wanted to use some money, and I agree with the uh, box director, that a lot of that work could be done by the um, uh, personnel they have on board now, um, it would just be the, uh, the funding. It would have, you would have to have a line item in there, uh, in my opinion, that would say for maintenance and um, or construction, um, rehabilitation. Uh, Council Pereira is right. We do have some grant money. It was a, um, a grant from the state. Uh, we're still working on it. Uh, we're able to transfer it from year to year um, in the account. It doesn't uh, go back to the general fund. It follows my budget. It was about 35000 and I think we've used about 20000 of it to date. So. Um, we do have a line item in there if uh, the council's will was to refund it, that that's where it would be uh, through this ordinance. Yeah. And I have a, a question for uh, Mrs. Smith also. Um, in terms of, we do have people that, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, of workers that, that would, it, would, would it affect um, them if, if we were to bring in somebody else or would we be able to work jointly? Well, uh, well, 
what I understood Mr. Haig to say, and correct me if I'm wrong, I mean, I think what he's saying is the money that he has is utilized for like major repairs, restorations to stones um, and, and things of that effect, you know, installation of new stones and, and major work that the in-house workers can't perform. I guess what I'm talking about is the day-to-day -day maintenance, the grass cutting, the what that comes from our budget, our parks and, and recreation budget. And if Mr. Haig is, you know, designated to use these fu this funding for mostly major items like, you know, polishing of the stones and the restoration and the cleanups, then I, I think we're talking about two, two different funding sources. Um, I do have some funding that I utilize for these veterans monuments. It's in the civic celebrations account. It's in the same account that we take the fireworks out of. So in the end, we buy flags for the various monuments, which Mr. Haig supplies flags as well for the outside monuments, but many of the, a few of the inside monuments in the parks, we have been um, providing the flags for. So I may have like maybe $5,000 in, in the end that may be designated to mulching and, and repairing or upkeep of these monuments in house. To answer your question, when you, anytime you bring in an outside firm, you could have union issues if it's a job that the in, that the workers presently are able to perform. If it's you know major restorations to stones, that's not something that someone who worked for the park department could perform, and then that would be hired out as an outside contractor anyway. And I think if we utilize the money that way, then there's a clear designation of what Mr. Haig's funding would be used for and what the day-to-day -day upkeep would be used for. And again, that's something that the, the council can look at when we come to budget time as well, if they wanna put a line item in a budget for the park department to do, have more money for daily maintenance. Um, I think what Councilor Pearl was referring to is money being turned back. And that may be, from what I'm understanding, Mr. Haig, is for major items that cannot be done in-house. Okay, yes, yeah, and union workers, those were the people that I was thinking of that the word was escaping me, that I wanted to address that. Uh, with that, I yield. Um, Councilor Lee? I didn't put my hand up. Oh, I'm sorry. Councilor Pereira? Yeah, had mine up. I think, you know, this ordinance came about through some discussions over at the Vietnam Memorial Wall Committee. Uh, many of the members there are veterans, um, you know, and we've talked about the Iwo Jima Monument, the Gold Star Family Monument, and now putting up the Vietnam Memorial Wall, which hopefully will be done by the end of July, beginning of August. They're going to be doing groundbreaking. And I think that what Nancy's saying is, yeah, the Park Department is still going to cut the grass and do everything around it, but we're looking at just the monument themselves, that there should be a person, a contact person, VSO, like Ray, to work in conjunction but to say that there's a state law, et cetera, there are other communities where monuments are under the jurisdiction of the VSO. And if you can utilize park department personnel to clean a stone or do something, that's one thing. But I know that with the wall coming in and with Iwo Jima, some of the monuments, they are specific to how they're gonna be cleaned. We've spent millions of dollars on you know the Iwo Jima monument, the Vietnam Wall uh, monument, the Korean monument, Gold Star family. We've spent millions of dollars on these walls. We need to make sure that there's somebody that's going to maintain those walls appropriately. And if the city workers can do it, that's great. But if they can't because there's special chemicals or you know some specialty to do it, then that's why I think that it should fall under the veterans organization with the VSO in line because they have contacts with all the other VSOs in the area um, you know, to be able to do that. And I understand that some of the chapter 115 monies is direct to a veteran. I understand that, but that there's also grant monies that we have that we haven't expended all. There was another 15,000 this year. That's a way to, you know, polish a stone or do something extra and make sure that the monuments are done. I think that in Fall River, we all, um, care deeply about our veterans and you know just keeping in line with that but if you you know would like to have 
the attorney or just get this over, he can look it over. But I, I really don't see a problem because they do it in other um, communities as well. With that, I yield. Council Kadim. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Uh, just a question as I was reading out. What, what am I missing? What, what exactly are we trying to do other than to make sure that uh, the veteran agent has some input on the on the monuments? Did we did we miss anything in terms of how things were established or how they're getting cleaned or managed? Uh, and Madam Chairwoman, that's through you to uh, Council Pereira. No, I mean, it's not how things are managed in that, just that the VSO, that Ray would be in charge of all of them that are there and he'd work with Nancy on you know, lawn, you know, mowing the lawn and, and keeping it cleaned up, whatever, but that if there's something special that needs to be done to anything, that he would be the one that would be in charge of or have the say on the monument, not the park, just the monument within the park. Everything else would kind of stay the same. Okay, so, so I guess to either Nancy or to Ray, is, isn't that how that's operating now? I mean, is, is that any different than, I mean, we. One would expect there would be cooperation between the veterans agent and parks and uh, cemeteries to, you know, make sure that the monuments are being maintained. We know where they are; they're being cleaned or they're being fixed. Um, you know, as as we obviously keep an inventory of them. Is that not taking place? Yes, I think to, to answer your question, Councillor, uh, Mr. Haig and myself have worked for a number of years with this. I think it was, a con my understanding was it was concerned with money being turned back in. I don't believe that the park board or the park department has any issue with how this is trans, you know, transpiring or has transpired in the past. Um, I don't know that Mr. Haig is gonna have a lot of um, spare money once all of these monuments come to fruition because they're going to take quite a bit of maintenance because we're, we're gonna have to worry about you know, vandalism or, or just keeping them up up to par because these are sacred grounds, so to speak, and we'd like to keep them in, in good order. And uh, uh, once these, a uh, number of these, they keep increasing, and I don't know what Mr., like I said, I don't know the, the dollar amount, I think, believe he said $30,000 or whatever, but eventually that wall is going to need to be maintained, I'm sure, polished, there are um, canisters, and this is what the the Marines, uh, the Marine Corps does with the Iwo Jima Memorial. We have a relationship with um, Mr. Aldridge, and he does reach out and to the organizations. But we all that would happen is just like anyone else who is either doing construction in a park or bringing in an outside um, firm to do work in a park. It would just somewhat be a courtesy, I guess, to say, listen, this is what we're going to do. I don't think the park board has, or the park department has ever objected to any type of work being done on the veterans monuments or for that matter, requests from the veterans organizations. We try to do our best to work to, to bring all of these to fruition. Um, so at this point, I, I'm thinking that we could keep things status quo if that's not something that the, the council wants to do or Mr. Haig wants to do. I mean, that Mr. Haig can weigh in on this as, as well, but I mean, I think we've worked pretty well together. The wall has come in with other individuals initiating the grants, with other indivi you know, individuals initiating the um, requests from the CPC and the board has, and myself have worked with them. And I, I just met with the contractor actually last week to, they had everything staked out and they're, they're getting ready to, to move ahead. And I, I mean, I'm just thinking it's a, it is a, as Councillor um, Kadeem said, it is a team effort. As long as we all know what's going on, I don't think anyone is going to be offended or anyone is going to try to stop <clears throat> what the veterans agent thinks may be in the best interest of a particular monument. It's just kind of a courtesy that the right hand know what the left hand is doing, so to speak. I guess that's the easiest way to put it. Um, but I don't I, see I, any issue. Okay, and, and I guess that's what I'm, I'm trying to get to. I, I think maybe the easier course of action is just to have some language in the ordinance that would basically say that, you know, the veterans agent will have uh, oversight of all, um, you know, veteran memorials and monuments um, in consultation with the parks and uh, cemetery division, uh, so something along those lines, because I, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, I think it's going to come back down to, um, you know, obviously there's manpower and there's funding, which department gets funded, 
you know, then the manpower, uh, you know, Mr. Egg doesn't have anybody that's uh, in his, his office that goes out and handles, uh, you know, cleaning or maintenance of anything. He's, he's really, you know, more of a, a clerical person in nature for his department. So all, all the hands-on work is going to come from, you know, Parks and Cemetery or DBW. So right. I think if we can just try to streamline the language a little bit so it's a little bit more clear, um, yeah, you know, I would have. A, I do have a question for uh, Ms. Sahadi in terms of what the administration's take is on this, and um, if if there is a change in terms of who's going to have the oversight of these uh, memorials and monuments, are we going to um, who are we going to fund, and where's where's the funding source going to be located? You know, at the end of the day, I think you know. We, I think I say this almost every single year. You know, parks and uh, parks and Rex doesn't even have enough money for their own. Uh, you know, the parks that we own, right? So we can barely maintain it. I think it comes out to $2,000 per park that we have. Uh, the cemetery is also struggling to, you know, get the funding that they need and, and require to, to maintain the cemeteries. So uh, it, it comes back down to, um, you know, if we're going to give authority to somebody to oversee something uh, and we're going to give them additional funding, then we should probably give additional funding to the department that currently overseeing it to make sure that they're maintaining it properly. But, I, but at the end of the day, I think there's got to be a coordination and it's got to be, as I mentioned before, a team effort between uh, the veterans agent, um, you know, parks and recs and cemetery in terms of, you know, how we're managing and, and upkeeping these, these memorials. I don't think we need to really kind of reinvent the wheel here. You asked me a question too. Mrs. Zahadi, Council. Yeah, just in terms, just in terms of the administration's recommendation, and then the, uh, you know, if there is one particular recommendation, how how the funding source is, how can how what can we expect from a, a funding source moving forward? Um, thank you, Councillor. I, I think at this particular point, um, as as both Mr. Haig and Mrs. Smith indicated, I think what we would do is look at both departments and really de determine who needs the funding source for what specific purpose as mrs smith said or maybe as you said counselor um mr haig is not in the in the um he doesn't have the abilities right now to actually do the cleaning where certainly miss smith has personnel that could in fact do the cleaning and so i think what we would have to do is look at each of those departments and the number of monuments and the um cost if you will to clean them um, I have not had a conversation with either um, Mr. Haig or Ms. Smith on those costs, and so you are correct. Um, nothing has has been added to either budget um, above and beyond what you've seen in, in the budgets in past years. But the Veterans Memorial in particular um, is going to need significant um, cost, I would think, going forward, although I haven't been privy necessarily to um, what those annual costs will be. Okay, uh, so Mr. Haig, I know Ms. Ms. Smith spoke a little bit, but do you want to add anything in terms of, am I missing anything? Uh, are we overlooking anything or is there any anything that you need in, in terms of just maintaining these monuments that you're currently not getting or that you don't see is, is being uh, completed no. on a yearly basis or biannual basis, whatever the case may be? No, I don't think so. Director Smith is absolutely correct. Uh, we do work very well together. Uh, there is no need at this point Everything is getting done, and I think this is more uh, probably a proactive uh, looking at the bigger monuments and the uh, cost, as Ms. Sahadi had said, going forward to get that lined up. I also read the resolution to be not only about monuments and graves. I think it uh, crosses over into the uh, operation of uh, Pine Street. Um, uh, uh, Council Prayer, am I correct about that? Yeah, yes. So in, in, in regard to that, I think it speaks to mitigating any problems uh, as they arise over there. What we've had um, historically is uh, we pay all the bills. It's our building. Uh, we pay all the expenses for it. But as different things arise, we don't have the authority, uh, or my office, and I don't have the authority. A lot of people come to me to try to get little things um, straightened out, as you will, um, and it, it's hard to do. So I think the ordinance speaks to that also. So I think there's other components within that ordinance other than just the uh, monument piece. If, if that's the way I read it, that's the way I've read it. 
I yield. Okay, so yeah, so, so I, I, I missed that. So it was the veterans facility. So to ensure that all four of the veterans facilities, greatest monuments and memorials are formed and provided in compliance with the code of the city of Fargo. I guess that's, that's, I guess that was my hang up originally when I, when I read that, that line was in compliance with the code of the city of Fargo or state laws in the best interest of the residents. I, I almost read it as if there was something wasn't being done properly. And, and that's, I guess where I was trying to get at. And then we, we kind of went off on a tangent on the monument. So then I thought that's where, where that was going. So what, what's, what's the concern with the Pine street facility? Well, uh, historically, there's been uh, little squabbles about space like there would be if you have multiple groups in any building and uh, territory type things, which we've mitigated it very, very well, I have to say. Uh, we had some uh, meetings. Uh, I believe um, Vice President uh, Bo has been involved in those meetings. Uh, I think Councilor Track Lee, I think I, I remember being meeting with him. And we got these things ironed out. But I think it would be a lot easier if we had um, one um, one spot of authority to uh, to deal with it. Because you're dealing with different boards over there from different uh, organizations. Um, they've been very, you know, very appreciative of what we do for them, and uh, we've worked on it very well. But sometimes when it does come to the veterans' office, um, it's it's hard to uh, make a decision if you don't have the authority to make the decision. But that's on that piece. On the monument piece, I'm sure that it's going to be done very, very, very well with our workers and the park department. Um, this is, looks to me like it's a clearinghouse type thing going through the veterans office um, and probably setting it up for the future. And, um, you know, that's coming soon. So um, the opening of the wall is a grand thing. We just got an office uh, an economic uh, impact study on what that wall is going to do for Fall River. So the money we spend on those monuments is going to come back two, threefold in an economic uh, sort of way um, with job creation and uh, people coming to our city to see the waterfront. So it's a good time to start thinking about this stuff and uh, putting it together. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Could I just, could I just request either from um, Mr. Haig or uh, Ms. Smith, just what we're actually spending on the maintenance of these monuments um, currently this fiscal year and the past fiscal year, um, and I guess where you folks feel that we should be in terms of, of funding and spending to uh, maintain these, because I'm, I'm sure we're significantly below where we're supposed to be. Uh, so I'm just curious as, as we begin the budget process and go through these conversations, you know, we, we often you know, lose sight of what what our needs are as we get to these various um, topics during different subcommittees. Um, and, and when we're looking at the totality of the budget, it just kind of falls through the cracks. I, I just want to be able to make sure that, you know, when we start talking about expenses and, and funding of our departments, uh, in particular, you know, parks and recs and the cemetery that we're, we're talking about, you know, truly funding them at, at least at a at a minimum benchmark of what we say we really should be maintaining these these properties at, right? Because I don't think we're there yet. So I'm just curious, and, and before we start seeing a lot of, you know, this larger memorial, the wall coming online, before we start to see a significant impact, if we can start phasing in some additional funding into the budgets, that, that might make a little bit more sense from my standpoint. With that, I yield. So Dion? Yeah, just a question. Um, with this conversation and discussions on authority, et cetera, would it make sense to separate facilities and monuments within this resolution so it's two separate entities as opposed to putting everything together? The park department wouldn't have anything at all, or the park board would not have anything at all to do with um, the facility, the Pine Street facility. It would, the only reason that we or the park department or the park board would have um, interaction or any involvement with this resolution would be because the monuments are located um, in city parks and in city medians that we maintain um, or the board maintains. But it may make sense because I believe the building would fall under the jurisdiction of Mr. Gallagher um, buildings and facilities department if I'm not wrong, but I don't know how the inner workings of who is actually in the offices would work. Um, so I don't know who has that jurisdiction. I would have thought it was the, the 
um, veterans department that would designate the space inside, but I don't know. So then I guess through the chair to Mr. Hager, I would ask the same question. Do you think it would make sense to eliminate that wording in regards to this resolution and taking care of monuments so that it's two separate entities instead of putting them both together? Well, it's a complex question because we're talking about several things in regard to uh, repairing or cutting grass around them mm -hmm. and different things like that. I think the um, resolution going to ordinance speaks a little higher than that as far as just keeping it all in one central location about what we need to have done as different veterans organizations come to the veterans office and ask for different things to be done to the monuments it's sort of like a clearinghouse i don't expect to do any work on it uh, as it's been pointed out i don't have a staff to do any kind of work and with that i yield Councilor Lee? Um, so we've, we've established in this conversation that uh, Mrs. Smith and, and Mr. Haig are able to work together. However, I think the value of this resolution uh, could be what happens, you know, when we have a new VSO down the line or a new park director down the line and we have some language in place already for them. So uh, as Ray said, we were looking to be proactive with this with this uh, resolution and, and eventual ordinance. So I think it doesn't have to be too complicated. And as Council Kadeem said, we can just kind of put the language in that somewhere in here, um, the, the commission, the park commission is involved in the contact and consultant part of this resolution. So, I mean, we're trying to establish the VSO here as the designated consultant and contact regarding you know the the, the list of, of other things in this uh, resolution so if we just added we already have the the, the the DCM we already have the cemetery and parks and recreational department I think if you add the park board into this language it's already been established that they have communication that they are communicating that they are working together but I think in the future if we if, if we ever have any of these positions change, then you have this in place that there would still be that status quo that that level of contact and communication to get things done um and and then we are going to need that i believe because as everyone has stated everyone has stated we're going to be having the wall and we're going to be having a lot more um going on regarding uh, cemeteries and parks and, and and maintenance and things like that so i think the value of this is good because you have the contact and consult part just add that park board and I think we'd be okay. So um, I yield on that. Just as a clarification, I checked with the clerk yesterday and um, the ordinance right now really doesn't say anything about any of this. Madam Clerk, do you have the ordinance as it is now? For the Board of Park Commissioners? No, for the um, veterans agent that Kat pulled out yesterday? Uh, no, I do not have that with me, I'm sorry. It's just a very vague couple of lines. I do not have that. Do you have it? No, I do not. So I, I have it in front of me, the Office of Veteran Services. Um, and in regards to that. You have the ordinance, Councilor? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Um, just. Does it, general provisions editor's note let me see this real quick sorry about that just give me one take a look down here there shall be a veteran service under the supervision of the veterans agent that's all it states oh it is huh that's all it says. Yeah, that's all it states. Yeah. I don't have anything else going on here, and I don't see anything else in here at all. So it doesn't really expand on on uh, on the duties. So I, I already yielded the floor. So um, so all yours. Council Prayer. <clears throat> well, first of all, um, the Veterans War Council 
supports this resolution 100% on having the VSO. They feel that it would be easier for veterans and for veterans organizations to communicate and have a conduit with, um, with Mr. Haig um, or whoever is our next uh, VSO. And I think, too, you need to follow the money because Mr. Haig has the ability to get some money from the state get reimbursements for veteran services and he can be a better conduit to get state money to come our way um that's kind of what i look at and you know yeah i think that they can work together but i think the vso should be the one that's in charge of the monuments that are here and and i do know what went on at pine street and the issues there i got many calls about it and there wasn't a whole lot that mr hay could do um except pulling people together to try to resolve it. But this would give him, um, there'd be more clarity and direction on it. With that, I yield. Anything further from the council? Uh, and, and I was there for those um, for those meetings and, and yeah. I spoke with uh, both sides when, regarding the Vet Center, regarding the War Council and an agreement that um, with the VSO being the center point for that specific situation, there's no doubt about it that the VSO should be involved in that. And it was very valuable to have that. Um, one of the reasons why, that's the major reason why I support this resolution, uh, based on how that was, you know, a very valuable situation. Um, but I think regarding the, the parks and, and everything else, I think that it, it, it's already been established that they are going to work together. I just think we need to make sure that the, that it's stated in here, and then we go from there. And I yield. Council Pereira, would you like um, maybe Corporation Council to look at the current ordinance? which really doesn't say anything and add sure. if, like, to if you'd like him to do, yeah if you'd like him to do that he could certainly do that but then again i would say that other communities their vso is in charge and state law does state that as brief as it is that the vso is the one who's in charge of all of the monuments etc so i mean maybe mr Haig could tell us about some of the uh areas in massachusetts that his counterparts vsos have jurisdiction over it and i think that you know you're talking about the park department it being the park department but overall it's john perry that oversees all of those so maybe we should have gotten him in on the conversation as well i don't know so but and Mr. Hay, that I, many... counselor um if you look to some of the biggest cities they all have their own ordinances uh similar to the one that you are proposing um that has to do with uh monuments and parades and things the vso's 90 percent of their um duties and powers are by state law and uh work directly with the state um it's been like that for a long long time actually uh the office is um pretty much independent other than a direct line to the uh to the mayor's office and um, you could look at some of those other ordinances if you wanted to, but I believe they are similar to uh, uh, what you're doing. I, I think a lot of the towns, uh, VSOs, actually uh, perform most of that, uh, what you're asking for. Thank you. I think that um, Corporation Council would have to draft the language to change the ordinance as well anyway. That's fine. Motion to refer to Corporation Council for language change. Second. The motion to refer made by Council Pereira, seconded by Council Lee. Mrs. Smith, did you have something to add? Second. I think the only the only situation, I think the Corporation Council should also look at the language where the, it determines if these monuments are in park property so that we're not, in the end, not, you know, what language from the state pertains to park property, which language from the state, you know, refers to veterans, um, I think the question lies because these monuments are in park property. So I think that's something the Corporation Council should look into at the same time and get us the decision once and for all of how we'll move forward with it rather than have one decision come down and then have someone else say, well, did they look at the what the park board's jurisdiction is? So I think if the Corporation Council looks at it as a whole all at once, we'll get the answer and, and we can move forward with this, however, because however it's going to move forward because like Councilor Lee said whether it be Mr. Haig or myself I think what has been the foundation has been 
the park board having the jurisdiction over those monuments, not what the what the park director says or what the, the veterans agent says. I think that's been what they have gone by. So I think that would be something that would be beneficial for the law department to look at at the same time. I would make a motion to add that to the um, to add, make a motion to add that to the uh, consideration and sending it to Corporation Council. And I believe Council Kadim is trying to weigh in again. With that, I yield. Council Kadim. Uh, no, I'm good. Thank you. Madam Clerk, did you get that referral? Yes, I had Council Pereira wanted to refer the resolution to Corporation Council to prepare a possible proposed ordinance. And then uh, Councilor Dion was, had made a motion, but it was not seconded to add um, some of the comments made by, the, um, by Mrs. Smith regarding the determination of monuments uh, being located in par property, who is ultimately um, has the final say. Council Prayer. I think with the attorney, with uh, attorney Rumsey, looking at the ordinance the way it is, that that too will be included into the ordinance. So, you know, I don't have a problem with sending it to him as long as, you know, we get it back into the ordinance quickly. Any additional idea? questions? Any additional right. questions? Do we need a second on that, Madam Clerk? Who was that, please? We need a second yeah. on Councilor Dion's addition. Yes, if you want to amend the first motion. Do you have a second? Second. Seconded by Councilor Lee. Madam Clerk. Okay, so now we could vote on the uh, amendment to the motion first. Yes. Councilor Kadeem? Yes. Councilor Dion? Yes. Councilor Lee? Yes. Councilor Pereira? No. Chair Liberty Lebeau. Yes. Motion carries. So now on the original motion as amended, Councilor Kadeem? Yes. Councilor Dion? Yes. Councilor Lee? Yes. Councilor Pereira? Yes. Chair Liberty Lebeau? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you, Ray. Thank you, Nancy. You're welcome. Item six, a proposed ordinance. FEMA required changes to the flood plan district boundaries and base flood elevation data. It was referred April 14th, 2020. Yeah, I have a question. Council Pereira? Yeah, I think that this is just, uh, this is a requirement of state law that this be looked at, so I would simply make a motion to adopt. I second that motion. Motion to adopt, made by Council Pereira, seconded by Council Lee. Any discussion? No. No? Madam Clerk? Okay, so this um, is a proposed ordinance, so the motion would be to pass this through first reading. Councilor Kadeem? Yes. Councilor Dion? Yes. Councilor Lee? Yes. Councilor Pereira? Yes. Shayla Liberty LeBeau? Yes. So the proposed ordinance will be passed through first reading okay. at the next meeting. Motion to adjourn. Second. Councilor Pereira, seconded by Councilor Lee. On adjourn, adjournment, Councilor Kadeem? Yes. Councilor Dion? Yes. Councilor Lee? Yes. Councilor Pereira? Yes. Chair Liberty LeBeau? Yes. That's all we have. Thank you. Thank you all. Okay, have a good day. Have a good day.